I'd like to welcome everybody to today's training, the basic wiring of an irrigation system. My name is Kelly Staggs and you're watching American Irrigator. You've got two wires. There's going to be one wire from the controller that's going to be a power wire. And it's going to be the main source of sending power to this valve. And then each one of these valves is going to be separately wired into a different power wire. But then you're also going to have what's called a common wire. Now this common is going to run to every single valve and every valve is going to also be tied into a common. You only have to have one common wire that's going to go to every valve, but then every valve has got to have one power wire. Where the wire goes in, this is called a solenoid. And these solenoids actually come off. If you've got one that's bad, you can, you can replace these because these do go bad. And it's got two wires coming out of it. They're both red. There is no difference between these two. Let me show you a different manufacturer. This one has got black, but they both have white stripes. So there is no difference between these two wires. Now this one, this manufacturer, has black. Both of them are black, and it's not indicating any kind of difference. You see, here's one. These are both just white. Same type of thing. As long as one goes to power, one goes to common, it's going to work. Now there is a solenoid that is a little bit different and it's what's called a DC latching solenoid. Is a DC latching solenoid is going to be what you're going to use in a battery operated controller. Now this on the other hand, this solenoid is going to have a red and a black and most of these DC latching solenoids are that way. They have two different colors and so when it comes to the battery operated stuff there is a difference and it does make a difference on how you wire this up, red and black. But on a typical system, these wires, there's two going in. It doesn't matter which one goes to power or which one goes to the common. Just so long as one does go to power and one does go to common. Now on the controller side of things, you're gonna have one common. We like to use white as our common. Some guys will use green. So those are your two typical colors that people are going to use for common. And then you're going to have one power. So going to just one valve, you need two different wires. In your controllers, you're going to see a C and it's going to stand for common. So your wire that's going to go to every single valve is your common wire. It's going to go where the common terminal is, usually marked with a C. And then after that, each valve is going to be have its own power wire, separate power wire, and it's going to go in whichever number you want that valve to come on at. So we've got it in number one. So when I program this controller for number one to come on, it's going to send power in this power wire straight to the valve for number one to activate the solenoid and open up the valve and run that zone. So in your controller, this is what it's going to look like. Now when you get out in the field, you're going to need a, a knife. I like to use a box cutter knife a lot of the times, or just a good sharp knife. You're also going to need some wire strippers. Of course, when you're coming into the controller, you need the screwdriver. But what you'll do, what's inside of here, is there's a little pull string that you can use to break that jacket open. But you've got to cut a little bit first to find that little string. And so if you hold this wire like this and cut away from you, just cut a little strip in there and then you kind of bend it open and then you can find that string. So there's that string right there. Once you do that, you can pull it, hold one in and pull that string and it actually splits that outer covering. Then pull all your wires out of it. And before you cut any of this off, make sure the wires are all out of there. There's been times when I just pulled some and I cut it and ended up cutting a wire off. And if you've got plenty of wire in a valve box, it's not a big deal. But if you don't, or if you're doing that at controller, it could be a bad deal. And then we'll cut all this off there. Cut that string off there too, making sure you're not cutting the wires. And so, sometimes you're going to come into a valve box, like this has got eight wires in it. This is an eight strand wire, so sometimes you're going to have maybe eight coming from the controller. 
you'll use your white and we're going to use our blue for this one and if this wire is going to keep going what you would end up doing is make sure you take a common out and then you would splice these together with another wire going out of this valve box but for today all we need is these two now when I'm stripping these wires at the valve I like to strip quite a bit off something like that then you can cut the extra off after you wire this in. So we've got a white as our common, blue is going to be our power. This valve's got red wires coming into it. Now again, the wires coming from your solenoid are typically the same color. It does not matter which wire goes to common and which wire goes to power. Just so long as one does go to common, one does go to power. You'll take one wire, and I like to twist it around there like that and see now you've got that extra copper and cut it off you want to cut it off to where it's even with the top now when you're wiring these up if you twist it or even if you don't twist it and you use the wire nut you've got to make sure that this stranded part the stranded wire from the solenoid is even with the top of that solid copper wire Let's go ahead and do our common, same way. Now, a lot of times these valves will come pre-stripped and because we're here in the studio, I just pulled that off. But a lot of times these will have the solenoids that are in the ground are gonna have mud and dirt. I usually cut them off and strip some good clean wire. Make sure you've got good, clean, not burnt or anything wire when you're gonna wire one in. Now let's talk about what we're going to use as far as weatherproof wire nuts to go on top of these wires. One of the things you do not want to do is use a regular type wire nut like this without any of the weatherproofing silicone inside of them. Don't just put these on there because these wires are going to corrode and you're going to lose your connection. A lot of times why valves don't come on is because of the splice. So you don't want to use just something without some sort of weatherproofing silicone inside of them when you're out into the field. Another thing you do not want to do is just put electrical tape on top of these. You're going to want to use some sort of weatherproof wire nut. Now you can get simple ones like this and it's got the weatherproof silicone in the middle of it and you'll push it on there, twist and tighten it and sometimes I'll go to where it actually starts twisting it but you do want to be careful you don't keep twisting it and twisting it and it'll just break the wire off. Well, something else you can use is something like this it comes in a little pack it's got a wire nut and then it's got a bigger silicone filled tube. Now these are particularly good for when you get up into your 14 gauge wire. These it's hard to push this smaller diameter wire in these type. And so in, in a residential setting, we may use something like this where it's just a wire nut with the silicone inside of it. And then another step that I'll do is if I, if I use these, then I'll take electrical tape and tape it on there. That way nothing will pull that off. But something else you can use is same type of deal as this, but it's a little bit smaller. And so this has got just the typical wire nut. It comes in the pack, so you want to use what it comes with. And then these tubes are also have the, the silicone in them. And so you'll put this on, put your wire nut on, then you'll open this up, push that down in there. And now you've got your valve wired in to your wire path, and it's ready to go. So let's look at it all together. So we've got a white as our common, and it's in the common terminal, which is typically labeled as a C, and it's going out into our valve. Didn't matter which wire coming out of the solenoid goes to common, just as long as one's tied to the common, because you've got to complete the circuit. And then we've got a blue wire tied into our number one terminal. This valve wired into here is gonna be number one on the controller. And then it goes out here, and the other wire out here in the field is going to tie to that number one. And this is your typical setup of your irrigation wiring on an automatic irrigation system. 
And so what this will do is you'll turn this on, number one, to come on. It will send power in our blue wire over to the solenoid. And then to complete the circuit, it goes into the common. It comes back to the controller and then activates the solenoid, opens up the valve.